Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, we're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And we're going to allow our audience, I think many of them will be meeting for the first time, the new dean of the law school at Oklahoma City University. Yes, Dean Valerie Couch will be here to talk to us. You know, when you get out of law school, there are three things you can do with the law. You can practice it. She's mm -hmm. done that. You can judge it as a judge on the bench of other people's practice of law. Mm -hmm. She's done that. Or you can teach it. And <laughs> she's done that. So she has uh, exercised all three options of what one can do when they get a law degree. And she's done them all in a superior fashion. We're just thrilled to have her come talk to us about what we can expect from uh, Oklahoma City University School of Law. Valerie Couch, today's guest on The Verdict. We'll be right back. Prices at the pump are hitting new highs this week. In other news, gasoline is expected to top four dollars a gallon this week. Expect drivers seeing sticker shock at the pumps. OPEC has raised the price of oil again, and Wall Street worries. Well, a full tank of gas is going to set drivers back. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased uh, to have joining us on The Verdict, Dean Valerie Couch. Uh, dean Couch uh, is the dean of the Oklahoma City University School of Law. She did her undergraduate work at UCLA in uh, Los Angeles. She did her master's and her law work at the University of Oklahoma, where she graduated with honors. She then went into private practice, uh, private law practice, for 16 years, where she was quite successful with the Hart, Hartzog Conger Case and Firm. In 1999, she was named for the Western District of Oklahoma a uh, U.S. federal magistrate judge, and she has served in that capacity until just this year. She was recently named the new dean of the University of, of Oklahoma City University's uh, School of Law and uh, has just assumed her duties and we're really pleased to have you meet her for the first time. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It is great to have you here. Uh, give us a little bit of background. Where, where are you from originally? I was born in Norman, Oklahoma, but mm -hmm. I grew up all over the country. We lived in Ohio and mm -hmm. Maine and North Carolina, always returning yeah. to Oklahoma. Yeah. Your, your family was involved in academia maybe? Well, my dad was a civil engineer and mm -hmm. he and his company often got contracts with the government. He was a specialist in communication towers, so we would go to Maine and he would work on communication towers that operated with submarines. We were kind of like a military family. Mm -hmm. And you uh, wind up in, in Norman? Yes. And, and uh, educated there? Yes. Went to UCLA for my undergraduate degree, finished there, and then came back to Norman, which was home. Uh, Oklahoma is definitely home for both myself and my husband. Uh -huh. And uh, your law degree was? My law degree is from the University of Oklahoma. Okay. I guess mm -hmm. Kent just said that yes. a few months ago. <laughs> well, you might have been paying attention. You were dozing. I guess so. <laughs> chose not to awaken you. Uh, what did you do after law school? Yeah. After law school, I went immediately to the law firm of Hartzog, Conger, and Kaysen, and I stayed there for 16 years and worked as a trial attorney. Had a very diverse practice, uh, all, did all kinds of general litigation in that firm. Did it help prepare you? It certainly did. <laughs> in that 
part of my life, I learned how to become an advocate and for a great diversity of, of clients, for companies, individuals, and nonprofits, and hospitals, and all kinds of, of people and entities. And I think that is what prepared me for really becoming a dean, which I find the job of a dean is really being an advocate an advocate for your students and your faculty and for the mission of the school as well. Now, you've been involved, I didn't say it in your introduction, but you were involved in teaching before this so as an adjunct professor, uh, at least at uh, OCU. Yes, I taught for over 10 years as an adjunct at Oklahoma City University Law School and I taught trial practice in the evenings, two nights a week. And Kent, I know you're an adjunct professor at our school and you yes, know what boss. that's about in terms of having a full-time <laughs> job and and teaching it was uh, it was a way though for me to become familiar with this school that I I really have grown to love now <clears throat> in 1999 you changed your uh, primary focus from being a practicing lawyer to a judge yes tell us about how that came about and what you experienced uh, after you became a judge I was very happy in private practice but this opportunity came open at the federal court and it's quite rare for these positions to come open. I threw my hat in the ring and lo and behold I got the job. Uh, I left the private practice of law and became a judge for 13 years and um, that job was entirely different from being in private practice. Uh, very, very, um, uh, a, a job that's very focused and um, more limited in, in the kinds of things that you can do in the community, but you're really providing a, a terrific service. It was, for me personally, it was an opportunity to be of service to our country. I had not been served in the military, but serving in the federal court system, I felt that I was helping our country advance. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you were primarily or, or significantly involved in uh, trying to settle cases. A big as, part of as a job. magistrate judge. Yes, a big part of my job was presiding over judicial settlement conferences where I could help the lawyers and the litigants really craft their own solution, find solutions to their legal disputes that they they created and mm -hmm. that was probably the most satisfying part of my work. How do you do that? Uh, Kent uh, and I <laughs> could spend hours telling you how that goes. I, I've spent uh, many hours with Kent and uh, members of his firm resolving disputes. You serve somewhat as a facilitator of the parties and find out about their interests, help them evaluate the risks of going forward to trial, and then as creatively and practically as you can find ways to to craft a solution mm -hmm. so that everyone leaves uh, with perhaps not everything that they had anticipated, but with a workable mm -hmm. solution, something that everyone can live with. Who are hardest people to deal with, the lawyers or, or their clients? I found the lawyers to be very wonderful to deal with. Often it was the clients who had expectations that were not realistic mm -hmm. about legal solutions and uh, carried into the disputes a lot of um, emotional uh, concerns that were difficult to uh, manage and difficult for the lawyers to manage. So I could sometimes come in and help them uh, with, with those issues. How do you know in the course of carrying out a settlement conference whether or not you've reached an impasse, you've reached a brick wall, there just isn't any reason to keep the folks around any longer, it's time to cut them loose, or maybe they ought to try something else or, mm -hmm. or try a little harder or or something different? You know, I meet privately with each side of a dispute and so I'm privy to a lot of information that they don't actually sometimes communicate to each other. From those private communications I can tell whether there is still an opportunity for resolution and sometimes I will just call a halt to the discussions but let some time pass, call the attorneys or litigants again and uh, you know, reopen discussions um, and go forward. Sometimes though, I can tell, just from my own experience as a practicing lawyer, that a dispute really needs to go to trial and that would be the, the superior result to get a, a public 
result that could be appealed publicly and be a part of the public record. Mm -hmm. How did you um, uh, first get contacted about this position as the Dean of the Law School? I was contacted by members of the search committee and asked to consider uh, applying. And what were, what were your merits that they said uh, appealed to, to them about, about your work? What were they saying that they had heard about you or witnessed then personally that, that, they, that they liked? Well, I, I've known the dean and the other administrators and faculty of that school for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've worked with them not only as a teacher but also in, the, in bar activities in the county bar and state bar. So they knew me very well. And I think they were reaching out to some known quantity. They, um, I think they liked the balance of my experience. I've mm -hmm. been a practicing lawyer, and those students are getting ready to go out into that world. So I've been there, done that, and they, they wanted and needed that kind of perspective. I was a judge for 13 years. That also gives me a sense of perspective on the law that mm -hmm. was important. And then I had taught there for a long time. But so. still a lot of this is new. Uh, and, oh. and perhaps the fact that you taught in the school was perhaps one of the biggest assets you, you brought into the job because you at least knew the culture. Yes. But, but what, you knew where the yeah. building was. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot is very new to me, and I'm I'm on a very steep learning curve right now. Uh, I've been surprised at the complexity of the enterprise and the layers of complexity that that a dean has to deal with, not only with the school but all the relationships with the university and with the um, the legal community and the bar, it's, uh, there are financial and budgetary concerns and personnel concerns and all kinds of, of really interesting uh, mm -hmm. challenges. We hear a lot about tuition increases in general mm -hmm. at higher ed. Is our law schools facing those same concerns? Yes, there are the same concerns about the cost of higher education and law school in particular. Um, and we are we're keeping our tuition flat. I read in the paper that there are some tuition increases in some of the schools in our state, but we are not increasing tuition. We're trying everything we can to keep the cost of education down, but it's a, it's a problem that all of higher education is addressing. It's really challenging in this economy. Valerie Couch is the new dean at the law school at Oklahoma City University. She's our guest today on The Verdict. We'll be right back with one more segment with Valerie. has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda Cobb Greetham. I'm a historian and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. I don't want to hope for the best. I want to become it. I want you to see my potential. Because I can be more than average. I can be amazing. Because I know the hard way and the right way are one and the same. I will make you proud. And surpass even my own expectations. I will lead. I will lead. I will lead America's energy future. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry. Proud to equip Oklahoma students for greatness. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all.
Welcome back to The Verdict. Valerie Couch is our guest. She's the new dean at the law school at Oklahoma City University. What are your first impressions coming into the position? Uh, my first impressions are of a very dynamic, collaborative environment. Uh, so different from my quiet, more isolated environment as a judge. But now I'm in this busy, engaged world mm -hmm. with all of these constituents and um, mm -hmm. that's my first impression. And as I indicated too, just the complexity of legal education is part of what I'm absorbing in these early weeks. Give us, give our viewers just a rough, doesn't have to be precise, a rough overview of OCU Law School. How many faculty do you have? The full-time faculty do you have? How many students do you have? Mm -hmm. Do you see any trends in either one way or the other? We have about 38 full-time faculty and we have another, I would say, two dozen really strong adjunct faculty members who are practicing members of the, of the legal community. Uh, our student body is something under 500, if you think of all three classes together. We're anticipating an entering class of about 160 to 170 this year. That's about the norm for you, it's isn't it? It's a little bit under mm -hmm. the norm. Uh, is it? The nationwide applications to law school are down 25 percent. They're not down as much as that at our school, but we are seeing that trending down mm -hmm. of applications because of the economy. I think that that's going to be a, probably a temporary experience. What about demographic breakdowns? Are men and women, are they going in, in, in different directions as far as the uh, people that are applying? It's, a, it's about half and half men mm -hmm. and women. It's a very balanced uh, class coming mm -hmm. in and has been for several years and we have a number, we have a real diverse class mm -hmm. and a lot of Native American, African American, all kinds of uh, people from all over the country. We have just a, a really rich and diverse um, student body. Well, let's talk about your faculty. Yes. Uh, uh, just kind of give our viewers an overview of who they are and what their uh, credentials are. They are superb. I have, that's one impression that I've had in these early days because I've been meeting with each of them to go over their teaching interests, their research interests, their scholarship, and how they're connected to the legal community, and I've been so impressed with them. We have very qualified uh, faculty who care about teaching. They also care about their scholarship, but they are superb teachers, and they want to help these students emerge as lawyers who are capable and ethical and ready to, to practice mm -hmm. and ready to contribute. Uh, I will give one example, or a couple of examples. Uh, we have a faculty member named Michael O'Shea, and he just published the very first textbook on Second Amendment law, which is gun rights and firearms law. And um, he is just a, on the cutting edge of the scholarship and teaching in that area. Really interesting, and he's drawing a nationwide attention for his work. We recently had um, our pro bono coordinator, who's also a legal research and writing instructor, and our new dean of admissions, get the pro bono award from the Oklahoma County Bar Association for her tremendous work <coughs> in, in connecting our students to many community needs. And mm -hmm. they're out there in force doing, you know, volunteer service in the community. You know, the, the president of the, of the university knows a little bit about the law. Himself. A little yeah. bit, yes, he does, <laughs> I must admit. <laughs> is that a little bit a, a little bit different, working for someone who, who is also a legal scholar? Yes, it's wonderful, actually, but he constantly reminds me. And we're talking about Robert yes, Henry. Yes, Robert Henry right. constantly reminds me that he used to grade my papers, so to speak, because <laughs> I was at the trial court level and he would see my work on appeal. Um, but it is wonderful to have him because not only was he my judicial colleague and I have that foundation of a relationship with him in that way, but he was also dean of this law school in the early 1990s, so he knows what the job is like and he appreciates the challenges and I, I find him a great source of support. If there are young people out there considering uh, law in general or OCU's law school specifically, what advice would you give families who are trying to look into those opportunities? I would say come to law school if you want to be a lawyer. Don't, he don't hesitate because of the temporary 
economic situation. Be careful with your financial planning for the legal education and apply for scholarships and, and pursue this wonderful education if that's what you want to be. I, I have a feeling that uh, all the media and the press articles that are about this are discouraging people from going to law school who would be great lawyers. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to see that happen. Uh, OCU law in particular is a place that is very innovative and very practical and, and, and very focused on preparing the students to come out prepared to be leaders and prepared to be problem solvers and prepared to be ethical and capable lawyers. In the discussion about law school or not and cost and yes. the like, there has been as a byproduct uh, some criticism that law schools are not preparing their graduates to practice or to practice ethically. Mm -hmm. uh, I know OCU for many years has been actually at the forefront of, uh, of clinical programs that allow students to spend a significant amount of time out of the classroom and working in a particular area doing a certain thing. Uh, you have your school has a reputation for being a leader in clinical programs. Mm -hmm. Can you tell our viewers what clinical programs you currently have? We currently have an immigration law clinic that is housed within Catholic Charities. We have a Native American Resource Center and clinic that addresses um, and helps tribal communities address domestic violence issues and also interestingly ha there's a, a focus on helping tribal members with estate planning and issues relating to their land. They have very complicated issues regarding to la land ownership. Hmm. Uh, and we have of course our Innocence Clinic uh, which is new. It's been in operation for a year. Yes, we've done a show on that. Yes. Uh, and that is an exciting development and our students are working there. In addition, we have, I would say, two dozen externship programs where we are placing our students in uh, legal environments where they can actually work under the supervision of lawyers and do work with, with either clients or in government agencies. And uh, those are an important part of our, our clinical experience. All of our faculty also intertwine their teaching and their classwork, the doctrinal and theoretical part of law, with practical uh, information and practical experience as well. Are there new trends, are there new courses that, that, that law schools are considering, new, new, new areas of the law that really haven't been studied or investigated that seem to be emerging as something that, that responsible law schools should start considering? One uh, trend I notice is the change in the use of technology within the classroom but also teaching law students how to use technology in their practice and we know that's going to be a, the way that lawyers practice law they're not going to be traveling thousands of miles to have a conference they're going to have a video conference and they're going to have collaborations and mediations by by on online or on in video uh, circumstances mm -hmm. so all of that is a focus, uh, and in, in particular, I think the areas that seem to be um, important now are intellectual property and, intele and interdisciplinary programs. I think more and more you'll see law schools recognizing that the law is interdisciplinary in nature and we've got to prepare our students with also information on economics mm -hmm. and business and religion and the arts, music, Nursing. It takes a well-rounded person yes. to operate in today's it uh, certainly legal does. field, doesn't it? It all really right. does. Well, Valerie, thank you for coming on The Verdict, first of all. And uh, we look forward to your continued service at the, at the School of Law and look forward to having you back on The Verdict a future time. Thank you. Yeah. I'd love to come back. Good luck. Thanks. Dean Valerie Couch, the new dean at the Law School at Oklahoma City University. Kent and I will have a final word when we get back. naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. 
Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. In Oklahoma, we enjoy a high quality of life due to good, well-paying jobs. Commercial real estate professionals play a significant role in bringing new businesses and investment to Oklahoma. The commercial real estate community has come together to market Oklahoma's commercial properties nationwide through a free public website, okcommercialproperty.com. We are invested in keeping Oklahoma strong and growing because economic development ensures quality of life. You will always be mom and dad to me. We are a very conservative family, and we believe in old-fashioned family values. We have a loving home there, and we love kids, and uh, we have five, six of our own. And, uh, but I had no idea we were going to go into adoption, but we're, it's been very gratifying. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political government and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of the verdict. We are wrapping up the show with the new dean of the Oklahoma City University's Law School, Valerie Couch. Yes, Valerie's going to do a grand job in that new position. She's got just the right blend of experience and background to be an ex excellent dean. Some really exciting things happening on that campus. All indeed, over. indeed. We have a website you can go to get more information about the school or about the uh, law school specifically, okcu.edu. And we have a website, theverdict.tv. Tell us about a show you'd like to see. For Kent, I'm Mick. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.